Welcome to the Lippis Report. Hi, everyone. Uh, it's Nick Lippis, and uh, I'm really happy that we're at ISOM City uh, this week. Uh, ICSI is ISOM City Lab, and we're testing uh, a whole bunch of uh, products from the marketplace for data center fabrics that are running at 10 and 40 gigabit uh, Ethernet. So uh, we're going to do a few interviews, uh, and uh, this interview is with Alcatel Lucent. Um, so we're going to talk about um, their new product, their topper rack switch. Uh, and so let's start uh, with the discussion with Alcatel Lucent. Well, thank you for having us here. We're very excited to have the OmniSwitch 6900 here, part of this test. Uh, my name is uh, Jean-Luc Cronard. I'm the product manager for uh, the products of the OmniSwitch 6900. Excellent. Great. Well, well welcome. So uh, let's first start the discussion with um, talking about the product. It's the 6900X40. So um, let's describe it make sure everyone is aware of what the product is and what it can do. Okay, the OmniSwitch 6900X40. So it's, uh, it's a little switch that packs uh, a lot of punch. So it's a one new high form factor, so fixed form factor. Um, that can switch up to 1.28 uh, terabit per second. So uh, quite impressive. Uh, it's 64 port of 10 gig at wire rate in a non-blocking architecture. Uh, when you receive the 6900X40, it has uh, 40 ports of SFP plus uh, in the front. Uh, it can support a so 10 gig transceiver or uh, one gig transceiver. Uh, you also have uh, two optional modules and each module can actually support 120 uh, gig per second of throughput. So those modules could be 12 ports of 10 gig, uh, three ports of 40 gig, or it can be a hybrid with 10 gig and 40 gig port on the module. So today in the test, we have uh, the OmniSwitch 6900X40 configured with 40 ports of 10 gig and six ports of 40 gig. Um, if we look at uh, the layer two capability of, of the switch, uh, you've got uh, the classic uh, layer two protocols like spanning tree, uh, like QNQ, multiple spanning tree. Uh, but you also have some next generation layer two capability uh, with our virtualization technology called the multi chassis link aggregation that allows you to group two 6900 together uh, to form a virtual entity. So from a link aggregation standpoint, you have a single entity. So for the edge device, you only need to use link aggregation to connect to the pair of 6900. Uh, that eliminates spanning tree. Uh, also, uh, what we've done for the 6900 is we ported code from our 10K, which is our core switch, onto that small platform. So you end up with a platform with a lot of capability in layer three as well. So all the advanced layer three protocols such as OSPF, uh, all the different flavors of, of PIM, uh, BGP, VRF, um, BFD is gonna be supported on the 6900 as well. So very robust platform in terms of, of layer three capabilities as well. Um, in terms of data center specific uh, protocol, Again, uh, a box that offers a lot of capability uh, with all the, the DCB uh, type protocol supported, shortest path bridging protocol supported on the box as well. And uh, if you look at uh, the power efficiency of the 6900, so it's a small switch, very power efficient. In typical running configuration, we get to about 3.5 watt per port on this uh, on this box. Okay. All right. Great. So, all right. Let's talk a little bit about some of the unique attributes uh, with the 6900. So, one, what are these unique attributes that it possesses, particularly for highly virtualized cloud computing, and also big data environments? So, you know, when uh, you talk about uh, virtualization and cloud computing and, and big data environments, obviously, the first thing that comes to mind is capacity. And as I mentioned in the first question. We've got a box that's uh, 64 port of 10 gig at wire rate, non-blocking. So um, the performance of the box itself is, is right there. Uh, in terms of latency, we also have a box that can perform very well, uh, sub-microsecond latency. Uh, so that's pretty well fitted for a virtualized and big data uh, environment. Um, talking about virtualization more specifically, um, the network administrator have had challenges uh, building networks with virtualization in mind. And one thing that the 1600 supports built in is the concept of virtual network profile. So the idea here uh, is the ability to track a virtual machine as it moves around the, the data center. So you configure profiles at the edge of the data center on the 6900, and those profiles are gonna be mapped to a specific virtual machine. And when it moves, it's gonna automatically 
follow the, the virtual machine. So that's one concept for virtualization that we have built in the 6900. Um, and the other thing that we're looking at more for the future is the future adoption of edge virtual bridging. So it's defined by the IEEE. Um, and you know, people look at this as an alternative to the vSwitch that's currently running in the server. So instead of doing the, the switching in software inside the server, you want to push it out to the, to the physical switch. And again, so we, you know, when we designed the 6900, although the, the standards were not fully baked and uh, you know, server implementation didn't exist, we made sure that the fundamental switching capabilities are there in the box. So when you talk about reflexive bridging, for example, uh, the 6900 can absolutely um, support this. Um, so yeah, so it, it supports those environments pretty well. The other thing that's worth mentioning for a virtualized environment, I was almost going to forget it, is you know the uh, predominance of uh, you know east-west traffic or the emergence of east-west traffic in those type of uh, environment. And uh, and again, we embedded some protocol like uh, shortest path bridging in the box so that you can accommodate this type of traffic very efficiently. Excellent, great. All right, so um, all right, let's shift the, the attention uh, a little bit. So, and, and away from particular boxes and more towards architecture discussion. So what type of network architecture does Aquatel Lucent recommend when you're deploying these kinds of products. So I'm kind of thinking of both maybe the 10,000 and the 6900 and all the other Omni switch products into a data center. So is this a two-tier, three-tier architecture uh, or something different? So um, so what's the architectural uh, recommendation that Alcatel Lucent uh, uh, provides to its customers? Uh, this is uh, this is a great question. Thank you for, for asking. So Alcatel Lucent uh, announced their uh, data center blueprint uh, back in April this year, so it was our dynamic tour, uh, big event we had in uh, in Europe, uh, and uh, so we laid out you know our new product, the 6900, a new architecture for the data center, and uh, you know we talked to our customers, business partners, analyst press, and the feedback we got back in April was was really good, and uh, that culminated uh, at uh, N plus I in May in Las Vegas, where we won uh, best of show for that uh, uh, blueprint. Um, so, in essence, uh, we use uh, the 6900 to, uh, as a building block for this, uh, for this architecture. So we can start very small. You put uh, two 6900 together and you can have a uh, very small uh, data center. Then we introduce the concept of pod where you can group multiple 6900 together. So four, five, six together. Uh, you link them, for example, with 40 gig ports. So we have six 40 gig on the 6900, so you can use that capillarity to link them together, so to mesh them together, and you have a pod. The great thing about the pod is that the servers that are connected to that port, pod uh, can communicate very efficiently. So you have a lot of bandwidth between these servers, and the latency between the servers is going to be very, very small. If you want to grow beyond the pod, so the pod already supports 240 uh, ports at 10 gig, but if you want to grow beyond that, uh, you can group several pods together in what we call the super pod. And uh, if you want to scale even beyond that, uh, you can use 10K, so our core switches, the only switch 10K, uh, and you connect the super pods to the 10K. And you can scale that very nicely. So with two only switch 10K, you can actually scale it to 14,000 ports at 10 gig. So it's, uh, it's quite a uh, quite large uh, data center at that point. Um, so within the data center, that's what we use uh, to optimize you know, the traffic on that pod and mesh architecture. Uh, we're looking at uh, shortest path bridging to optimize the forwarding, to minimize uh, the latency. Uh, and if, you know, that's within the data center. If you want to go beyond the data center, we're working very closely with our uh, carrier divisions as well uh, to provide um, data center to data center communication uh, and to provide an end-to-end -end architecture that spans not only the inside but also the inter-data center uh, space. Okay, great. All right. So uh, I want to go to um, a another topic that is uh, maybe a little bit narrow, but it's important. And it has to do with spanning tree protocol. A lot of discussion about replacing it because it operates in an uh, active uh, bypass uh, kind of mode. So um, the question here is that what is the spanning tree protocol replacement option uh, to build uh, what's called either a fat tree kind of architecture uh, or really a fabric that is non-blocking and low latency? 
Ah, spanning tree. So spanning tree uh, has served us very well uh, those past uh, years. Uh, it's widely deployed. It works well. Um, however, with the modern data center, what's clear is that you have, you know, a need for large layer two domains, uh, efficient uh, layer two control protocol, especially with the rise of east-west traffic. Um, so clearly, you need something else. Uh, spanning tree doesn't cut it anymore. So Octalucent um, sees, you know, two. Uh, potential replacement. So the, the first potential replacement, and I alluded to it uh, earlier in the conversation, is multi-chassis link aggregation. So if you have um, a hub-and-spoke uh, type of topology in your data center, so you have, you know, for example, two core uh, switches and then the topper racks that are going to concentrate into those two core switches, uh, what uh, is very easy to do is to group those two switches in the core with a protocol called multi-chassis link aggregation. Uh, so these two switches will actually appear like a single entity from um, a link aggregation standpoint. So the topper racks, uh, you take the two links or the end links, uh, and you link them with link aggregation. So you don't need spanning tree anymore, it's link aggregation. And the great thing about link aggregation is the resiliency. So you can recover in less than 50 milliseconds uh, if, you have, uh, if you have a failure. And that reconvergence is actually deterministic. With spanning tree, depending on where the failure happens, uh, you have non-deterministic reconvergence time. So that's, that's a good thing. Um, the other thing that uh, link aggregation brings you is a better and more granular way to do load balancing. So you have all these links um, active, and you can load balance on, uh, on flows uh, instead of just VLAN that you could do with uh, uh, multiple spanning tree. So that's you know, one way to, uh, to suppress spanning tree uh, when you have a hub and spoke architecture. When you have an architecture that's a little bit more complex, like the pod and the mesh architecture we alluded to earlier, um, what we recommend is more advanced protocols like uh, shortest path bridging. Um, this is really uh, key to our pod and mesh architecture. And, um, you know, shortest path bridging is based on ISIS as the control protocol to build uh, optimized forwarding. Um, shortest path bridging uh, is, you know, a protocol that's not completely new. Uh, you know, the PBB, the Mac and Mac piece of, of shortest path bridging has been used by carriers for a long time. It's proven. Um, so it's just this ISIS control protocol to put on top of it to make it a functional protocol. Um, the other great thing about uh, shortest path bridging, and you were asking about low latency, is that it provides you OAM flow, so the ability to actually measure uh, latency throughout your data center. Uh, when you look at alternative to shortest path bridging, uh, to name one is Trill, uh, these mechanisms don't exist today. They have to be built from scratch. So the great thing about shortest path bridging is that you leverage what has been done for the carrier, and one aspect of it is actually the, the low latency uh, measurement capability or the, the latency measurement capability. Uh, the other good thing about um, SPB, uh, since we're talking about it, uh, is the ability to extend beyond just the data center, but also to go uh, on the wide area network and to interoperate with uh, wide area network routers. So we're, we're actually, um, as I mentioned, it working with uh, our carrier division uh, to implement that end-to-end -end, um, data center architecture that, that includes, uh, that is built with uh, shortest path bridging. Okay, great. Now, the, the industry is really starting to wrap its mind around the whole concept of putting storage and also uh, data onto one fabric. Uh, so it's the converged uh, I.O. strategy. So let's talk a little bit about that and what is Alcatel Lucent's converged I.O. strategy uh, for the industry? Yes, you're, uh, you're correct. When we talk to uh, our customers, when you talk to, uh, to the different analysts in, in the industry, it's clear that there's a trend uh, toward convergence. Um, what's interesting is that we see still a lot of organization that have spec convergence in their RFI, RFPs, but they don't have you know, plans to move in that direction immediately. It's something of interest, but it's not something they're rushing toward. Uh, you know, the storage uh, people are uh, uh, conservative. They don't want to take any risk with storage. And you can understand, you know, because 
there's a lot of critical data that's there. If something goes wrong with storage, uh, it can be crippling for, uh, for the enterprise. So um, as far as Alcatel-Lucent is concerned, um, we definitely see this convergence trend happening. Uh, what we'll do is address it in different steps. Uh, the first step is to implement lossless Ethernet over our switches. When you look at the uh, OmniSwitch 6900, OmniSwitch 10K, um, so we're looking at uh, protocols such as priority flow control, uh, quantized congestion notification, so QCN, uh, ETS, uh, DCBX, to really implement an end-to-end -end, uh, lossless uh, infrastructure for, uh, for converged uh, networks. So that's one step. Um, the second step that we're looking at is to have actually uh, fiber channel interfaces on the 6900. So that's the great thing about the 6900. You've got those optional modules in the box. So they're really there to guarantee the future and the future proofing of the box. So you don't have them today, but in the near future, uh, we'll be able to offer fiber channel interfaces on those optional modules. Excellent, great. Well, thank you. Well, uh, we've been talking with Alcatel Lucent about their approach to data center networking uh, at ISIM City, where we've been testing their 6900 this week. Look for the report out shortly, uh, and also thank you for joining us today. Thank you, everyone. That concludes this edition of the Lippus Report. Thank you for joining us.